Welcome to Basm.ca. Today I'm going to be talking about factor price equalization. Now why is factor price equalization so important? Well, it's a fundamental part of international trade theory and that is exactly what I'm going to be talking about. Factor price equalization involves the prices of factors such as capital and labor used to create commodities in certain countries. So let's take soccer balls for example in Pakistan. Soccer balls require laborers to create. So what does that mean? Well, uh, you actually have uh, laborers in Pakistan who are cheap to acquire and they can actually make soccer balls for a lesser price as opposed to maybe the United States where it's more expensive to create soccer balls using laborers. So that's why we can see this relation. So. Let me try and put this into better perspective and how factor price equalization works. So factor price equalization means the actual factor prices are coming together from two countries that are doing trade. So why do countries do trade? Well, when there's a difference in domain prices, we find that the countries actually can find gains in whatever they are producing and when whatever they're producing is being exchanged, we actually find profitability. So, let me quickly put this on a graph. So, okay. So, we actually are talking about the hechscher olin model, okay? So, we have the y-axis and we have the x-axis. We have a price ratio between x good X and good Y. So the price ratio between good X and good Y and what else we have is another ratio on the X axis over here where you on the numerator we have W and on the denominator we have R. So W what that means is wage. So that's the price of labor and R we have the rental rate which is the price of capital. So let's see how that illustrates. So let's draw a line that is positively uh, sloped and let's put that in there, okay. So now we have two countries and let's illustrate these two countries. Let's put country A over here and let's put country B over here. Now, why is country A here? Well, let's call this country Pakistan we actually have labor that is cheap over here. So if you're looking at a ratio of W over R, we can understand that the price for labor is low. So if the price for labor is low, the entire ratio should be low. Since the numerator actually has a low value, the entire ratio is actually high. So. Let's try and also illustrate this with country B. Why is this ratio so high? Well, we understand that the price of capital is lower in comparison. So the price of capital is actually low over here. So when we're putting this into a ratio, we can see that the entire value is actually higher. Just because the price of capital is low we actually find the price of wage to be higher. I mean, you actually have a higher skilled worker in a country like the U.S. So that's why the price of, um, the price of uh, labor is actually a lot higher in comparison to a country like Pakistan or Africa. So let's try and uh, see what happens when both countries engage in trade. So let's say country B gets something from country A and country A gets something from country B. That's all that's happening. So what we can say is that country A is now producing a commodity that requires a lot of labor. So what happens when there's a lot of labor being required? There's high demand for labor in country A. So the actual price of the factor actually increases. In this case, it is labor. So the price of labor is actually increasing. So what we find is W over R shifts upwards, which means that the price of wage 
is becoming higher, which moves the entire ratio up. And so we actually see a movement where point A actually increases upwards. Now let's see what happens with B. We understand with B, we have W over R, and we find that it's producing, um, it's producing whatever it wants to produce, but it requires capital. And so since more capital is being used, there's a high demand for capital in country B. And when there's a high demand for capital, R actually increases. So we find that R goes up. So when R actually goes up, the entire ratio shifts downwards because R is in the denominator of the ratio. What that means is that the entire ratio's value decreases since the value of R increases. So we find the movement over here from B to here and from A to here. We're going to call this point E. So what happens at point E? At point E we find factor price equalization. At this point there isn't a difference in commodity prices. So at this point trade is not possible. So what this tells us is that trade actually happens until factor prices equalize then trade doesn't have to happen anymore so countries find gains when they are over here but once this has happened there's no point anymore so I hope you like this uh, this video lesson and if there's any issues any concerns any questions just send me an email at basm.m at gmail.com and uh, be sure to check out my website, basm.ca, uh, the Facebook group. Uh, that's just on the link at the top as well. Uh, I have a couple of surprises coming up, so be sure to keep your eye out for that. And thank you so much for the visits. I mean, I'm getting visits from Moscow, getting visits from uh, Bangladesh, I'm getting visits from India, and of course Canada, the US, all over the world, and I really appreciate it. Uh, I'm very thankful in every way possible. So thank you so much, and I really appreciate you guys coming onto my website.